The months-long pandemic has changed nearly every aspect of life, including where we want to live. Smaller suburbs outside of major cities are becoming major attractions with more and more people on the move. So which housing markets are getting the most attention? Here to break it all down is one of the top 100 realtors in the United States, Rogers Healy of Rogers Healy & Associates. Rogers, welcome to the show. I am one of the people that fled the city for the burbs, so I completely get it. Right. So talk to me a little bit starting about New York City and the top suburbs of New York City that people have fled to. Sure. So the stuff with New York City, I mean, this is nothing that we've seen out of the ordinary, but it's people that are flocking to places like Greenwich, Connecticut, which happens to be one of the most affluent suburbs and zip codes in the entire country, Westchester, New York, and then even Jersey. So Monmouth and Bergen counties in Jersey have been really, really, really popular ever since this all broke out. And it's people like you that are probably going to stay there, you know, in, in the long haul. Oh, yeah, I'm staying. I can only speak for myself, Sorry. but I'm staying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let's take a look at Chicago uh, yeah. now, top suburb of Chicago. Yeah, so Chicago has some great suburbs. And the thing about the, you know, suburban areas of Chicago is they also have better school districts than really their urban core. But um, what we've seen in, in Chicago is Clarendon Hills, which is probably a 30-minute drive or maybe a, a subway ride or a train ride from the actual city. You know, which is not that bad for people in Chicago, which is kind of a, a mini New York City in its own right. Um, and then we've seen Houston, which is in my great state of Texas. And there is a nice little city called Cinco Ranch, which Cinco is Spanish for five, uh, which, again, has great school districts. And Texas is not known for having an incredible public school system. But, but the sur suburban areas in Houston, Dallas, San Antonio, El Paso, et cetera, have done really, really well. And then another great big city that I used to live in is the city of Angels, Los Angeles, where you know people have gotten outside of the urban core. They've gone to Santa Monica if they can afford it. They've gone to Irvine, and if they've got the cash to do it, Hermosa Beach has been an incredible, incredible opportunity as well. Santa Monica is one of my favorite places uh, to visit. I, I don't blame people for wanting to live there. What is happening to the prices of homes in these suburbs as the demand is increasing so heavily and so quickly? Right. So it's just, you know, economics 101, supply and demand, and, and builders truly can't keep up with it. Where most people thought the suburbs, when we had the recession in, in the early 2000s or early 2010s, the suburbs got hit pretty hard. And people flock to the urban core because they want to be around convenience. But now people want space. And if they're making less money, they want to get more bang for their buck. So it's been it's been really, really good to where the demand has not been able to be kept up with with the supply. So I think we've got, you know, a, a good multi year run ahead of us on the outskirts of the town, especially cities that have a really densely populated urban core like New York, Chicago, L.A., Miami, et cetera. Thanks so much, Rogers. Loving the stats today. Remains to be seen if people head back <laughs> into those cities, but I, I'm with you. I think they're going to stay out. Once they, once you get that space, there's no going back. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I thought you said you were loving Thanks the stash. Thanks so stash. much. Appreciate it, as stash. always. Yeah. Yeah, oh, well, that too. I, I'm a fan of the stash <laughs> as well, so don't worry. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks yeah. so much. Okay. Here is something to think about as we get closer to...